One of our viewers made this request. She said, knowing that dark colors recede and light colors come forward, how would I paint a dark object on a light background? Then she gives an, as an example, a black dog on white snow. Well, we won't use black and let's see what else we'll do. In Quick Tip 145, I gave you a few pointers on doing snow, so you know you might want to review that one. But in this one, this spe special request about how do you paint something black on something white? Well, and the example is a black dog on white snow. There are lots of things to consider there. One thing is that you don't ever see two things, well, you rarely see two things in the same situation at once. So. As I always say, observe. Look what the look what's going on or in the surroundings. Well, let's just take an example here. I, I've gone on to pixabay.com and pulled five examples of a black animal on snow. Now one is a goat and the other four are dogs. But I thought these give a perfect example of the kind of surroundings. For one thing, the snow is not just a background. The snow is the environment in which the black animal is uh, positioned. So look at what's going on in that snow and you'll want to reduce the concept of white but give an illusion of white. Now I'm going to give you a, a little bit of a tutoring on how to do that. The other thing is uh, look at what's happening within the animal. That in, within the animal, you're going to have subtle changes in shadow. And some animals, I, I couldn't find one that was solid black, uh, but even animals that are solid black, even in the snow, if there is no light, no direct light, there's still going to be some reflection of light, the reflection of that snow back on the animal. And then the other thing to observe, now these, these are things to look for. The other thing to observe is, what's happening around the edges of that animal in that snow or, or it could be on the beach or it could be in other environs but always examine the environs as not just background but as a part of the whole scene the animal in this or in that so I'm going to give you just a, a brief I'm not going to do a whole little painting you never do you know that by now well, I'm going to give you just a, a brief little um, exercise here that might help uh, to know a good way to approach it. Not the only way. Uh, other people have different ways of approaching this sort of problem, but this is a good way to approach it. You might try it this way, and then you might go looking for other people's ideas about how to approach it. But, first of all, uh, let's just place the animal. Now, if it's really, if the sun's really shining bright, or what, a situation such as we have here, where it does appear to be a lots, lots and lots of white in this photograph. If you were there, you would see more shadows. But in the photograph, it does appear to be lots of white. In that case, you'd want to really zoom in on the animal when you cro when you crop the the uh, the picture, the painting, whatever. You'd really want to zoom in on the animal and have more animal showing in the painting than you would have uh, the surroundings. So there's one thing. Another thing is if you have uh, if you have other surroundings such as we have here, then allow that background to be a part of the composition. Uh, and he, such as we have here, we have obviously sunlight with lots of shadows. Here we can show more of the back, of the surroundings, um, and a little less, or a little further back from the animal than we are here. Here uh, we have a, just a close up of the animal's head. So there are all kinds of ways that you can compose this pa a painting of of this subject. All kinds of ways you compose it. But what you don't want to do is to have. A, a dark animal sitting right in the middle of a whole background of snow or sand or whatever without having lots of other things 
uh, participating in the composition. So things such as shadow, uh, like we're seeing here. So um, I'm, I'm going to take this one because it's, this is the one that seems to have less going on in the background. I'm going to take that and just give you an idea of how we might approach this. So first of all, um, I will place the animal. Now, let's see, I'm going to give myself a little bit, oh, but by the way, not using black is a good idea for this because you're not going to see uh, black so much as you're going to see uh, variations, subtle variations of dark hues, dark color. Now, uh, one good combination to use for uh, for painting black animals or black hair or black anything is to find two complements that are both dark. One example of that is what I have on the palette where I've used ultramarine blue and uh, transparent oxide red. Now those two work well as complements. You could also, depending upon the colors or in the environment and how it goes, you could use something like phthalo green and alizarin crimson. Those two together, those are uh, relatively complementary to each other uh, and and they make um, a wonderful range of grays and neutrals and so on and so, so there are many ways that you could go there but I'm going to stick with this and this one ultramarine blue and um, transparent oxide red and I've added here um, a little bit of red violet this is quinacridone violet just in case I need it so well, what I'll do first, first of all now is to place place the animal. I'm going to get just a little bit of the self marine blue on the brush. I'll go right over here. Just a tiny bit of solvent on that. And get more of the solvent. Now I'll just first of all give, give ourselves a little bit of a, a format. And since this is a sort of a square format, I'll just do that. Now, to place it. Um, so I can place... Um, the top of his head there and place the uh, top of the ears here and see we have the top of the ears there we have that little tail going off the canvas I'm not so sure about that but um, we'll do it nevertheless because it's there and then as we come on down now I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and indicate here um, something of what I'm observing and um, in the frontal part of that uh, little body and then we have we have this back portion. He's a he's he's um, mired down in the snow, as we can see. So I'll just kind of place that and bring that down. That's not doesn't come down as far as it might feel like it is. And then the um, place just the outside of the little legs there. Now we see the little this this uh, front front paw is coming down, almost touching the edge, kind of mired down in the snow there. And then uh, what we see on the other side going on is, um, let's see, we see the little, the little muzzle doing something like that. We see the ear. This is on the outside edge, and we're looking at the outside edge, um, the size of the outside edge in comparison with the size of our format here. And we see that that foot or that paw, running out of juice here, that paw of uh, comes down at kind of a, a, a horizontal, I mean a vertical angle, and then tilts this way. And so we have that. Now, uh, I'm going to do just a little bit more here to indicate where the animal is. And we see that little paw uh, sort of coming out like that. And we see this little paw kind of coming in, in the, see the little angle right there. And then, so we see, we don't see a lot of detail uh, in the in the features of the little dog, but we see enough to um, to get the imagination going. I'm leaving off that bandana, whatever that is that I see there. So now there we have that. Uh, let's see. Let's get that just a little bit closer in. We've got him too spr too spraddled there. A little bit closer. I'm going to uh, I'm going to take that out and pull this over a little bit. Yeah, editing's probably a good idea. When you um, when things don't exactly get a line, now I'm going to get a little bit closer in here, pull this over just a little bit, then pull this in and pull it down, kind of align that a little bit more. There we go, a little bit more like that, and, uh, and then this goes a little bit more like this, a little bit closer together. Okay, now <clears throat> once you sort of have the little the animal placed. In this case, that little muzzle comes all the way down right there. Okay, once you have the animal placed, or, or relatively 
uh, placed. Then, before doing anything about snow, it's a good idea to sort of silhouette where the animal is. Now, in this case, you know, mo most of my tips, I suggest that you do what's in shadow and what's not in shadow. Um, in this case, um, I don't know that the sun is shining that bright. Uh, I think that most of what's causing the light here is the the dark against the white of the snow. So we're getting lots of light from the white of the snow. So I'm going to, because we're seeing more dark here within the, the little dog itself, I'm just going to use that and we're going to do just a little bit of a silhouette to place that. And I'll show you why in just a moment. Now to do, to do that, I'm going to actually use the color that I'll be using for the dog. I'm going to reach right in here into the dark, darkest portion. I've got to be sure I get all that solvent out of the brush first of all. I'm going to use uh, just the darkest portion of the ultramarine blue. You see I have the value line. I've explained the value line in other quick tips. You can look those up. And I'm, I'm mixing those. You see I get a nice dark black. It really, really does look black. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to place that. I'm going to roughly scrub that into the canvas. No solvent because if you get it too wet you're going to lose control. So I'm going to roughly scrub that into the canvas in sort of a silhouette of what I see right here. And um, so I'll just do that. And remember I've told you that this is just one approach. Uh, let's see. I'm going to keep that uh, relatively thin in terms of how much paint is spread on the canvas. And, um, and and move relatively slow as I'm uh, as I'm placing that. Um, that's just a little silhouette form of what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to leave white where I see the the white bits around his uh, his nozzle there, his nose. Nor and we see little bits of snow on him. I'm not going to leave white on any of that at this point. I'm just going to just looking at the overall dark shape that I'm seeing there and I just want to uh, just want to create a silhouette of that overall dark shape. Okay, uh, let's see. So I'm very... Uh, I really am I really am not in love with that uh, shape back there, but I won't argue with it because it is part of the of what we're looking at. So I'll just put it in. Now that doesn't come down very far; it comes down to about right here. So I, one one piece of advice when you're doing something like this, or when you're doing any exercise, don't assume anything. <clears throat> but uh, when, when you're looking for how to, uh, how to place a shape or where to place a shape, don't assume anything, but allow your observation to tell you where, where to put these things and don't argue with your observation. And, uh, and always be willing to edit if your observation... Uh, usually your observation doesn't fool you. It's, it's how your opinion or your expectation enters into the observation or interferes with observation. A lot of times that can happen. You, you got to learn the difference between what you're observing and what you're expecting. Okay, now pull this on down like that and go very, very slowly. Very, very slowly. And okay, going down like this. Very carefully. Now, where does that bend? It takes a bend about right there, about right here. It takes a bend, and let's see. And then it uh, has a little angle there. Okay, you don't have to get this really perfect because we, as long as we're working on a, a painting or a study, we have an opportunity to adjust or to readjust. Okay, so I'm going to. Um, I'm trying not to get in the camera's way here. Normally I would take, well, let's see if I can do that. Use the point of the brush. I guess a little bit. There we go, like that. Now where does that start bending? It bends down about like that. That's close enough. 
Now let's go back up like like this and see how that joins. So I came over a little bit far that way. That means I need need to go back and reobserve and make that just a little bit too skinny. All right, and let's like come down again like that. And I'll step back and see and uh, with a a little bit of a squint. Need to do a little bit of correction here. So, um, there we go, like that. Just a little bit of correction. Let's see, now I squint, and I'm relatively close to what I'm seeing there. All right, now that we have the silhouette, have silhouette of the animal, um, it's, a, it's a good idea to go ahead and place the snow. Now, or, or whatever happens to be, it's snow in this case, so we'll place it. So we're going to do the shadows first. Um, and we're going to place those shadows. Let's see. We're going to place those shadows. I'm going to place those shadows a little bit darker than I'm actually seeing. Now I'm going into about middle value. Now what, uh, and we're seeing those relatively sort of in the blue. We're got, we notice that in snow, uh, the shadows often sometimes will go towards purple, go towards blue. Uh, and uh, you just use your observation there. Well, actually, those are going a little bit more towards purple. So what I'll do is I'll bring this this blue uh, out onto the palette like this. I'll put just a little bit of the the um, uh, transparent oxide red in it, there, like that. And we'll put just a tiny bit of the, the violet in it. And it's the value that counts in a study like this. And this is just a study. So, okay, now I'm going to place that I'm going to place this, the, the, the shadow bit, I'm going to place it where I see shadow, right here, and I'm going to bump it and marry it or blend it right up into the animal. And so that's where I see shadow there, and I'm placing it, it's coming on down like this, I'm seeing some shadow there, and blend it in with that silhouette of the animal. Okay, now I'm seeing shadow here, it's lighter. But I'm going to go ahead with this value, and you'll, I'll see, you'll see why in just a moment. Um, maybe just maybe 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 raise it just a just a tad, but not much because this initial placement of shadow in, in an approach like this, um, if you'll make the initial placement of the shadow a bit darker than the shadow you're abs uh, you're observing, then uh, it's easier to lighten it later. Okay, I'm getting this, and so I'll just place this here like this. And again, I'm going to move it right up in and blend it in with the silhouette I have of the little pup there. Now let's see, see shadow. Okay, uh, if we, this is one place where I don't think the camera is telling us the truth. So I'm going to kind of do that. Now we see a little bit of shadow on the other side. Right over in here, just sort of like that, and the shadow comes on. In this case, yes, we do see shadow going off the edge, so this will help to anchor the composition to have that shadow going off off the edge. And say, so I'm going to bring that shadow part. It seems to be darker. I'm going to bring that all the way down like that. Now, this is what I mean about suggest the whiteness of snow without actually making the whole thing just solid white. Now the other things going on, or the other things that can be going on, we can we can actually take from these, because we can't see what's on either side of that pup. But um, I'm betting that, um, I'm betting that we're going to have some other shadow areas, and I'm betting there'll probably be bits and pieces of shadow that might be going around like this. And so I'm just going to Scrub. Now this is not scumble. This is scrub. It's going to scrub, kind of an underpainting of that in. Now let's see. Maybe well, just a little bit on this side. Maybe just a little bit on this. I just have this as a continuous sort of a shallow area coming across. That could be a dip in the snow. Could be just about anything. All right. Now that we have that, I'm going to just do a, just a just a very rough block in of of the dog itself. I'm not going to do I'm not going to do an actual painting of the dog because I don't want to take the time for that. It's going to be a, a longish quick tip anyway. Um, but what I want to do here is sort of just a block in. I'm going very dark and just block in with broad strokes. Just block in just 
just the the darker values that I see as I see them in that animal. Now I, I see already it, as you work on something you begin to see things. <clears throat> I see reflection on this animal right here. I see light reflecting it there. I see light reflecting on the front here in this area. I see some light reflecting in there. And those are the kinds of things that are going to going to um, meld the black of the animal with the white of the snow. All right, let's see. Um, that you know, the nozzle is about right down here. Actually, it's coming down a bit further than that. And uh, that, that, and... And I like to uh, mix the, the black as I go because we do see variations. There are variations in the, the, the actual color itself. And especially in some animals you can see it uh, where the light, some, some black animals have some brown in them, but uh, where the light is shining on a, a, a animal's fur, oftentimes you'll see some brown coming through. So let's just give that a, a brief block in and let's give this a brief block in here that's all we're doing and this makes just a little get a little bit more of that that paint and let's see I want to get uh, a brief block in of this shape right back here okay we'll just do that I'll pull that over and let it go off like I see it here and now I think maybe I may stop the block in portion of that right there. Now that gives us outside of the of the animal blocked in. Okay, now here's when we start the magic sort of off. <clears throat> we have the we have the animal blocked in, we have the shadows of the snow blocked in. Now I'm going to reach for white, pull it on the palette, a good bit of white, pull it on the palette. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of this uh, this transparent oxide red in the lighter portion and I just want to tint that white just tint it a little bit that tinted it too much that's that's the um, it's kind of tricky part of of what I like to do and I like to think of that as being kind of the light of the snow I'll compare this and see no I think maybe I need just a little bit more white in that now, why am I doing that? Because white by itself is a cool color. Most of the whites are. There, there are some whites that manufacturers uh, make that uh, attempt to be warm. But when compared to the, when compared to colors on the painting, the white can often look very, very cool. So I like shaping the initial uh, block in of the painting or the study. I like shaping it with a warm white and I'll usually warm that with some color I have on the palette. Now I'm going back for the going back to the brush here. Now let's look at what we can do. Um, <clears throat> starting in the background, starting in the background, starting on the, the actual snow itself. Um, let's just you see when I put that down you can almost feel the light shining through already. Now, and what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to block in some light without touching the animal. And you'll see why in just a moment. So just just uh, sort of hang with me here on that. Now right here, this is where I'm beginning. I'll pull this light into the snow. Just like that and let it blend. Let the snow or the shadows of the snow blend into the light in such a way that we hardly notice it. We'll just get the variation on that light. This, I've got some, I'll pull some black onto that brush from the animal, and that's the reason I'm trying to avoid actually touching the animal, is to keep that black out. So, um, let's put that in here, here. And I'm going to block in the light over here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'll just go ahead and lay the, the light portion right in here and just right up next but don't touch right there now I'm going to blend I'm going to blend I'm just using crisscross strokes here the shadow and so that gives us a gives us a more subtle shadow in the white so let's, let's squint at that that 
you know, that, that works pretty well. Now I'm going to bring this on down and do the same thing here. So you see, it, it, you don't see any edges on those shadows. You see it very subtly blended. So I'm just pulling the color from underneath with the brush like this and then giving it just a subtle blend. And then I'll do the same. <clears throat> I'll do the same thing. I'll start at this lighter right in here, like this, and give that a very subtle blend. Well, actually, it's more subtle blend. Now, remember, I said we we saw that very much lighter there. But by doing it this way, laying the the darker part on first, we can then give variation and have a little bit more control, make it a little bit more dynamic than if we just mix that color as we were going. Sort of laying that color in um, ahead of time. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm sort of just moving around it, uh, moving it around it, adjusting the light part of the snow with the shadow part. Now one thing that um, it, it, we have to watch in our when we're doing uh, snow, we have to watch our language because we'll start calling the whole thing snow, and we switch our language to talking to saying or defining the light of the snow, the light part of the snow with the shadow. Now here again, we've got that subtle shadow, but we have a blend. It's blending. So what I want to do there is give that a very subtle blend right up and let it get just a little bit darker as it gets closer to the animal. Same thing here. Now there we have a little bit sharper shadow in the snow, but it's still not sharp. As you will see, as you see, it's still blended. So the edges, the edges of those subtle shadows uh, are all blended. They're blended, they're blended here, so we blend them here. What we observe here, we do here. Now we we do some exaggeration here so that what we observe um, so, so that what so that we can make more interesting that part we observe now we already feel there we already have feel that sense of that dark animal lying in the snow and a part of what helps to make us feel that way rather is that we have the shadow the shadow part here that's um, melding, you might say melding, visually melding the dark of the of the animal with the snow itself. Now I'm not going to take time in the quick tip to do a complete painting of the animal and I know I'm going to get some complaints about that but that's not the purpose of this. The purpose of this is to show you how you can make it fit. So that if um, once the, the once a major uh, block in uh, once the major colors and all and shapes have gone into the animal somewhere in there, uh, I should say that differently once the snow is formed especially the, the snow around the animal, once that's formed the next thing is to look at the edges of the animal and how, the, how those edges are, um, are intertwined with the snow itself so I'm going to do that part of it, and then the, that's going to be the end of it. You can you could finish that yourself. You can go to pixabay.com, type in what did I type in? Uh, animals in snow, and somewhere you'll find this pup, and you can do the same exercise, and then you can spend as much time as you want to. All you do here is just come in with uh, the lighter values. Be sure they're not white, not not as white as that, but come in with the, the lighter values just to form those little lighter areas. But to, to actually meld the image with the snow and make it work, you can, once the paint is here, you can go in with a dry, with a brush dry, just dry all the paint and the, and the solvent out of the brush, sit the brush right on the edge and give it a little slight push. Wipe the brush, sit it on the edge and give it a little slight push. Uh, anywhere you see air, anywhere you see the hair of the animal moving in, moving on top of the snow, uh, you can see it really. You can really see this is a this is a furrier animal here. So you can really see it there. Uh, where you don't see the hair moving on top of the snow, it still needs a slight blend. And the best way to do that is to go from the outside in and just blend those edges. Just blend them just a little bit. Just let the brush barely touch the edges. Give it a very subtle blend. And that blending is called. That's the. Uh, sort of chiaroscuro in a way. 
that blending will enable the the shape of the animal to feel as it's as if it's merging into the snow itself. Uh, let's see where else I want to pull push some animal fur into the the actual snow right here. Now, all those edges should be blended uh, in this in a you already have the contrast of the very very dark on the very very light and so that contrast itself is going to define the animal so all those edges around but where the snow meets the black animal all those edges need to be blended so I think maybe I might have shown you enough here um, you might uh, well I think maybe I've seen something else here I think we need a little bit more of that feeling of follow through right here visual follow through if nothing else of, of this shadow area with this now okay now the the last thing on any stuff on any snow scene the last thing you do is put the light accents and that's what says to, or the very white accents that's what says to the viewer this is snow or that helps to say to the viewer this is snow and helps it to feel more white where there is no white really so for that I would use pure white in most cases some uh, well the, some sometimes I might uh, add a little bit of yellow to that white a little bit of orange and so where, where are we looking here we can look at the edge of shadows we might look a little bit right there and just take the white load the white on the brush like that and the whole of the brush and just give it a little bit of a like you would a grass stroke like that where you would see the edges uh, are especially in places where there are indentions in the snow and like that, sort of like that and that should help then to put the finishing touches on what would be a snow so I'm, this is as far as I'm going to take that in spite of uh, your rebellion that I can already hear that's as far as I'm going to take it because I gave you the principle I think that you need and I gave you the resource for to find the resources so that if you want to um, if you want to work on a study to uh, create this this um, this kind of a problem or to solve this kind of problem then you can do it for yourself hope you enjoyed this quick tip if you have questions or a suggestion for a quick tip leave us a comment right down here in the YouTube comment box and take a trip over to dyingmice.com and look at all the things we have there for you including full-length video tutorials and while you're there sign up for our newsletter so you'll always be informed of our latest adventures thanks for watching